Welcome back to the channel, y'all. Got an adventurous day. It's morning right now. First, we got to go on a run. We got to see what's going on after these rains. I haven't been on the trails in a while. I, I had water flowing through my backyard. Shrooms. I'm not eating those today. Got my stick here to break down cobwebs and fight off the danger noodles if necessary. It's probably gonna be pretty snaky out there. But one of the main reasons I wanna go on a trail run today is there's other trails I wanna explore with hunting season coming up if I get picked for certain lands. And also I know there's some fish down there. So there's kind of some unexplored areas I haven't been into. I wanna go check that out. I'm gonna see how the trails around here are doing just based off the my normal running trail. <laughs> It's not your normal running trail though. First thing we gotta do is get through this little section. Watch out for snakes. These copperheads blend in so well right here. There's the den. Two giant holes. <sighs> Shoot. So the water has actually not come up that much. It's basically an old pond right here. Here's someone's wallet. Whoa, there's nothing in this wallet. Come out here and clean this lake up just a hair. That person was probably having a lot of fun when that happened. Look at these giant clams, man. Raccoons are probably having a heyday. Huge. There's definitely been some deer or hogs right here. Keep her moving. There's definitely fish back here. I can see them swirling. Actually, I see a carp tail right there. Oh, in the shallows. Oh, that's crazy. Deer. Look, you can see how where the hogs have been all up in here. There's 100% hogs in these bushes around me here. During this daytime, they just bury down in this stuff. More hogs, more hogs, fresh. That's fresh. Oh yeah, they are back here. After that rain, holy cow, holy cow, right on the trail, right on the trail they've been rooting up. I can see where they've just run through this stuff, broken it up while they're feeding, just like little bulldozers. All right, here we go. Okay, here's what I wanted to see. How much water is gonna be in this creek? Okay, that's gonna be a good indicator what the other creeks are gonna be like. Not this muddy, the other one's rocky. That goes right out to the lake though. Normally when I run this, it's dry. It's kinda of cool, you can see a hog track next to a paw track. Ooh, see those claws. See those claws coming out right there on those paws. All sorts of stuff living down here, it's crazy. This would be a perfect situation for a fly rod. Huge carp up in the shallows. Look at that, it looks like a redfish in the marsh, just feeding. I see a few others in there doing the exact same thing. This would be a perfect situation for fly rod. Ouch, I just stubbed my toe. Let's finish this run, and then let's get to our other trails, get some rods. Decent run this morning, lots of wildlife. It's always cool when you can see deer and hog tracks and all sorts of animals even fish, and that's what we're after now. Let's talk about gear prep. You know, I did this in the last catfishing video. Uh, you guys liked it. Doing kind of the similar situation here, except I'm going on a different trail. I wanna say it's like 20 miles long. I'm not going in that far. I will someday, because I just, curiosity. But I've only been down this trail one time, and I remember seeing uh, the water flowing down this creek. I came across a pond in the middle of the woods and I did see some activity. Saw some water moccasins as well. But I wanna go see if there's any bass in there, uh, but I know there's a lot of other sunfish species in there. So I'm gonna take the old Yampa River. You guys have probably heard me talk about that a lot. That's my, uh, my crappie rod. 
I use it for white bass occasionally. It's basically just my ultra light setup. Currently I got some old crappie line on here. Crappie line, get it? Heh. But whoever used it last pretty much got a backlash and I don't know, it could have been me, but anyway, I'm gonna take this line off. I'm gonna be putting some pretty premium line on here. This is a uh, Sunline FC Sniper. I believe it's the cheaper of some of the Sunline fluorocarbons. I mean, it can get pretty crazy. But what I have found with line is that if you get a pretty good line, you can keep it on your reel longer, and then you don't break it off, you know? You just don't have those pissed off moments. Life's about enjoying fishing, not breaking fish off and then crying about it. If you've never seen a, a spinning reel spooled up, I'll show you how to do it right now. It's even easier with light line. That's one of the main mistakes people make with spinning reels is they put too big a line on there. They think, oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna bump it up to 12, 15 pound test. And when you do that on a spinning reel, you're always running the risk of the line just coming right off the thing. I tend to never go over 10 pound test on any monofilament or fluorocarbon. You wanna run it through that first Islet there, lay it flat on the ground. Don't roll it off of there. And the reason you want to do that is because with well, a spinning reel, the old coffee grinder, or some call it, putting on line a different direction than a bait casting reel. So a bait casting, you want it to roll off the spool, and on spinning, you want it to just pop off the spool. And uh, Sunline likes to put this little notch in their spool, which I told them time and time again, you gotta change that. It keeps hopping on the ground on me. I've never wrote in and told them that, but y'all can. They put it right there for some reason, but the line likes to catch it. I done got this one tamed. Probably gonna be enough. Probably the third mistake of, of spinning reel backlashes is putting too much line on there. Yeah, got it. Starts getting like a rodeo horse on me. Starts bucking around. All right, we got our rod figured out. Now let's get our pack figured out. Round two into the woods. Smoothies. Smoothies. Yes. I'm like the last bag of hand-picked strawberries from April. Oh, the ones you got. Yeah. So that's in my smoothie. Yeah, that's why it's so, yes. so good. Oh, I can taste that they're hand-picked. Can you? Uh, no. no, no. <laughs> It's still good though. It's always good to get a nice dose of dairy before you go out in the woods. Mm. <laughs> and just don't throw up. Because <laughs> it's like over 100 degrees outside. I'm not talking about throwing up. I was talking about coming out this way, but I guess you're talking about going out the other way. <laughs> All right, as far as packs go, of course we gotta bring that water. It's Texas in the heat, but we're gonna be in the shade, so it's gonna be all right. Got myself a thermosail, got myself a hatchet in case I need to get into some wood, old wood or dig in the ground, find some grubs and stuff. Got a knife, cause you know you gotta have one. That's our gompa, made up with a six pound. We got a GPS, last time I went out here I actually did get lost, so I got home plugged in here so I won't get lost. Our typical film stuff, cause that's how I gotta make videos for you guys. Extra lenses, got GoPros. This is probably the tiniest tackle box I've ever carry on a fishing trip, but I'm going with the basic essentials here. Got a few crazy flies in there, just for fun, just to fill the space up. But I got little hooks in there, got a bobber. I got some small little bluegill jigs. And that's pretty much it for the pack. Oh God, what was that? Hope oh, that was not a snake. That's a pretty cedar. A little slippery here, gotta be careful. Okay, we got our little box. Little jig head in here, here we go. Look at the tiny hook on that. Is that not the tiniest thing you've ever seen? So then we'll take this little slip cork, we'll slide it up, put our jig head on, and then we just gotta find us some bait. All right, slip that through there. We'll stop that up. Just like that. Get that tied up. Now we just gotta look for us some bait. Get out the old hatchet. So one of the most obvious places to look is just right under these little logs. See these beetles that are shooting out? I don't even know what kind those are, man. Those are like iridescent little beetles. They're super daggum fast too. And you wanna look for the, the wood that's been laying on the ground a long time. Always roll stuff towards you just in case there's a snake under there. Uh. And that's, that's super soft right there, so. Very, very, very soft. Find ourselves a couple grubs. Oh, there's a worm right there. 
see that there's some sort of worm species i don't really know what that'll work there's another one right there okay got us a couple worms we'll put one of them in our box here for safekeeping and the other one is going on the line tiny little offering there we go oh man that's a wriggler that is gonna get chomped let's go by this log or just right there. It's getting nibbled already. There it goes. Trying to get it. It must be just tiny minnows. Dang, they cleaned it. We got cleaned very quickly. All right, we're gonna chop this dude plum in half. He didn't like that too much. Look at that, two squigglers. Two for the price of one, man. Can't beat it. I guess we'll take this one first since he's the most active. He's getting played with, getting dabbled. Oh, getting bit, getting bit, going. Oh, did he get me? He, oh, he got me. Clean me. Let's talk outdoor strategy for a minute. I have dug up some worms out of the trees. Uh, they work amazing, but it does take some work to get them out. I got to get out the ax. I got to go into the tree. I have these little... I'm assuming they're ice fishing jig heads. I don't really know. I kind of just found them. They probably came from one of the Northern Googans or something. But what I can do, since I don't have any small flies with me, I have these big flies. I can take these and I can snip some of the tail off and then I can tie my own fly using that little ice jig head. When they're just rapid firing on that worm and just taking it off every two seconds, that's gonna get annoying real fast. I'm gonna try making one of these flies and see if that works. All right, step one. Our jig head off. Step two, we're gonna cut ourselves some line. Step three, cut ourselves some feather. Or I could find a feather, but that would probably take me a lot more time. Um, kind of hard to tie knots, not having my index finger right there. But, um, mm -hmm. yep, pretty freaking hard. Let's wrap it up on the head, good. Will an overhand loop work? I'm not sure what I've done right here, but uh, just something. Maybe a little caterpillar? Oh. My gosh, one just whacked the cork, tried to hit the cork. Got him, oh, came off. Let's get in some of the flow right here. Oh, gone, got him, got him, got him, got him. Oh, came off immediately, just bloom. They like it when it slaps the water like that. Hit boom, boom, got him, came off. Got him, got him, got him. Oh yeah. That is the tiniest ever. Uh, the last one was a little bigger. That looks like a green sunfish. Managed to land one on the fly. They're coming up and hitting that cork. Like I really need some floating flies. I would slay, that's what I really need. I'm gonna make some adjustments, make my cork a little bit shorter so that fly's sitting up higher. I'm do some more walking, see if I can visually see any more. Listening for the sound of water again. There's a dirty pool right there. Either deer or hog tracks. From a day or two ago. Oh, there's a nice snake there. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's the old slithery one we don't like to see. We're also gonna step away from that edge because that's a little, a little nasty. Danger noodle spotted. See some more fresh deer tracks right there. It was probably this morning or hours ago. Little bass wanting him some. It's kind of cool though to see bass all the way up here into this creek. Oh gosh, got him. Got him. He went for it. There's the old green sunfish. Pretty fish. Tiny little creek fish. All right, let's cross right here. See where that deer got a little slippery. Might be a big fat buck. There's his game trail right there. I'm gonna go this way though. Not deer season yet. I would say that this is just a hair overrun with grass. I could see a series of tall trees kind of in a line. Oh, there's a big deer. Oh my god. Those are monster bucks. Those were all 150 class bucks right there that's where one of them shot up that 
was insane, guys. We just saw three giant bucks. Hopefully you guys saw them. I mean, I saw them. I don't know if the GoPro picked it up or whatever. There were three big bucks bedded down in here and I just came, I guess they didn't win me or whatever. They got up as soon as I got down in here and uh, they just went trudging off. I saw one running off as I went up the bank just to check. Uh, and I could see their prints where they shot off into the woods, but that was insane. I mean, those were really, really nice bucks. They're still grouped up together, which was cool to see. They had their velvet on. Like, and it's, it's hunting season's almost here. We got like, you know, a month and a half left. You just don't see stuff like that every day. That's why I love being out here in the woods. And I bet you one of the tracks that I saw coming up the creek was one of those bucks. They were big. Oh, I can see where some deer have come down here. The creeks now. Look at this, fresh tracks everywhere I go. I'm gonna take the old float and fly off and go with the tiniest spoon I've ever seen in my life. So what fishing's all about, you know? You just grab a tackle box that you've never really seen before and go see if you can catch fish on it. This little bad boy right here, if I was truly lost in the woods and I needed to catch some fish for food, there'd be a 100% chance I'd, I'd be carrying spoons with me every fish likes a spoon water is muddy back here but we'll give her a go oh 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 that's a tree well i lost my spoon I'm pretty much out of any good tackle at this point you gotta take a breather it's like 100 degrees the dew point's like 70 something Dripping through my long pants here. Distance. I think we've be at least been seven or eight miles and this thing is like 20 something miles long. So I haven't even scratched the surface. This is the kind of thing I'd be doing whether or not I was filming. I'm sure I'm losing just as much water as I'm drinking. Let's keep trucking. I am drenched with sweat again. Man, y'all. I've probably been in the woods today for 10 miles jumping up the deer that were bedded down obviously i found one of their favorite little bedding areas so those were some mondos i didn't step on any danger noodles or have any close encounters with danger noodles see them from afar they're okay just not up close tons of hog activity and i caught probably the two smallest fish i've caught on this channel all year but it was a fantastic day in the woods and i do want to take a second to point out the uh, new piece of paraphernalia here in the fish cave, the Make Every Cast Count American Flag LFG a dish from Mickey and Stephanie Burks. They wrote in a letter to me and OSG and they sent us this sign, it's awesome. If you notice, that's the only other thing up here right now besides my bass and uh, <laughs> two lures where some other mounts are gonna be. So Mickey and Stephanie made this sign for me. I just wanted to say thank you. In your letter you wrote in, said some things I, touching to me uh you guys are going through a hard time and and it, it helps you with us being positive here on this channel i get inspiration from you guys just like some of you get inspiration from me being positive on this channel so i just want to say it works both ways uh i'm praying for you and uh if you want to follow mickey it's uh bearded kayak angler i think is his instagram and steph's instagram as well not my stuff um his stuff and I'll have them linked down below so you guys can go check them out. That's it for today, fishing freaks. I have got to go help a buddy in need. He needs to hang a large TV. It's a replacement one from his daughter that threw a toy at his other TV and broke it. Gets me just super excited to have a daughter on the way. Those are jokes, guys. And I'm going to work on the table. I have got about 300 gigs of footage from building this table, and it's almost done. We are at the final steps. I don't even know how to edit this thing. I don't know whether to make it like one crazy long video, uh, break it up into other videos. Like, I, I don't know. I've never done a table build. I've never done a long wood build video on this channel. But when you see it, you're gonna understand. It is specifically built for where this tripod is sitting right here, the table for the fish cave. Miss Mondo, why don't you send it off for us? Hope you're having a blessed day wherever you are. I'm just kidding. Hope you're having a blessed day wherever you are, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the ding dongs so you don't miss a single bite. And if you want to follow along for other projects here at the Treehouse, link will be down in the description where you can see OSG's point of view and other things that are happening around here. All right, guys, that's it. I will see you on the day.